Kelly Emerson and Brendan Hall here for ESPN Boston High Schools. We're less than a month away from the inaugural Super 8 baseball tournament. At midpoint in the season, there's still a lot up in the air, but one thing that's not up for debate is Bridgewater Raynham, the defending Division One state champions. Uh, what's attributed to their success and who can stop them? Yeah, uh, you know, last year, uh, we looked at that team after they won the state championship and looked at what they had coming back, and we were like, wow, this might be the number one team going into the year. They had a lot of hype in the offseason, and these guys, credit to them, they took a focus in the weight room. I know Joe Friday, when I spoke to him a few weeks ago, talked about I had never really lifted before uh, this winter, and, and uh, you look at the way he's hitting the ball now. Uh, I, I, first game of the year, I saw him hit one, uh, looked like a pop-up, and it just carried about 400 feet for a home run. The next week, I saw him hit one off the end of a barrel of the bat, carry for a home run. I mean, he's just hitting an incredible power. Um, we know about Jack Connolly, Andrew Noviello, the two, the one-two punch. There isn't a better one-two punch right now in the state of Massachusetts than those two juniors. Um, those three kids, all high major kids, you know, uh, Joe Friday going to Virginia Tech, uh, Jack Connolly uh, with his, you know, nice curveball there and, and, and great location and the way he never really uh, rings up a high pitch count. He's going to Notre Dame. Andrew Noviello headed to Maine. Uh, but this is a kid I saw two weeks ago throw 92 miles an hour in a game and you know this is a cold weather state uh, Kelly and, and this time of year um, it's it's tough to get your velocity up and to hit 92 in the middle of April uh, as a 16 17 year old kid I mean that's pretty impressive don't you think I mean these guys I mean given credit you know um, they knew what they had to they had to accomplish they didn't let off the, their laurels at all uh, they're really determined to be the inaugural Super 8 champion here and you see the way they're hitting the ball right now I mean Noviello's got a slugging 9967 Friday is over a thousand on his slugging percentage, an OPS of, of 1.666 for, for a high school player. That's pretty impressive. Uh, the way these guys are playing right now, um, so they're, they're really determined to make a make a statement that last year was not just some fluke, and they're really ready to go. Now, the toughest conference appears to be the Catholic Conference. Mm -hmm. How many teams from that conference do you see going on to the Super 8 this year? Yeah, I, I think St. John's Prep has put themselves in a nice position right now. Uh, they're, they're in first place in the Catholic Conference. They made a big statement uh, yesterday, Thursday, against St. John's of Shrewsbury, down four runs in the seventh inning. They rallied to win 6-4 in the ninth inning on a walk-off from Nick Latham. That's a, that's, a, that's a win they really need for their resume. Uh, they're only – Blemish to the season is a loss to Peabody uh, in the first game of the year, and Peabody is in contention for Super 8. That's a good resume win for Peabody. I think St. John's Prep is, is, has done enough to get in at this point. Um, I, I think BC High, uh, the way that they're playing, it's not a, as talented a team as they as haven't been in years past. There's no real big brand names like they have in years past going to high major schools, but they do have a very solid lineup. They have a lot of speed on the base pass, very scrappy. You know, Sean Webster, Thomas Russo, Andrew Janig. Uh, I do have a concern about their pitching going forward. Uh, I think that they need to be a little bit more careful. Um, but it, 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 those are the two teams that have been most impressive in the conference right now. I think they've done enough to get in. There could potentially be three teams. I think I think Catholic Memorial and Malden Catholic will be two teams that really pay attention to down the stretch here. CM has some great pitching. Tyler Bell, the sophomore, has done some had some pretty nice outings. Uh, Malden Catholic, just a well-rounded team, very fundamental. Uh, they've done a, they've had a couple nice wins. You know, Bill Ricca, St. Peter Marion. Uh, I, I think watching them, those two teams in the next couple of weeks will determine how many teams get in from the Catholic conference. So. Now we've got a number of contenders this year. Um, who's in? Who's out? Who's got some work to do? Yeah. Uh, if I were to pick eight right now, I think everyone agrees universally that Bridgewater Raynham is in. They might be the top seed at this point. Uh, St. John's Prep, I think everybody at this point will agree that they're in. Um, the rest of the way, I got Newton North, um, you know, that, that impressive start they had, not allowing a run for their first five games. Uh, I, I think you have to consider them. Uh, I, I think BC High at this point is in. I think St. John's of Shrewsbury, while you would have liked to have see, seen them, you know, get a couple of statements wins there, uh, losing to BC High in extra innings on a walk-off, losing to St. Peter Marion uh, in, in that fashion, losing to St. John's Prep in extra innings. I still think they've got enough of a resume to get in right now if they're one team from Central Mass. Um, West Springfield, I think we have to have a Western Mass team thing in there if this is going to work. And Right now, they're the top dog, but that's going to fluctuate. That could, Tomorrow could be Springfield Cathedral. The next day, it could be Westfield. That's still very much up in the air, that race out there. That's going to be very interesting to watch. And then, I think you go down further down the line, I think Peabody, I think is in um, Andrew McLaughlin uh, really you know tying down that that starting rotation he's been a horse for them all year long and then uh, Maskinomit they've outscored the opposition so far through 10 games 107 to 20 
They're a Division II team, but they have two UMass bound starters in their rotation. So they have some talent. Um, they're going to run for the Cape Ann League. Uh, they should run for the Cape Ann League. I know people looked at their schedule, but I think if you look at how impressive they've been with that schedule and the talent that they've got, I think they get the edge uh, over some other schools. But I think you know a lot's going to be unsettled over the next couple of weeks. But that's who it looks like right now. But a lot could change in the next I don't know week, two weeks as it get closer. So. Do you see a Division II team making yeah. the eight-team field? Yeah, I mean, Masco is a Division II team, and and you know we said the week schedule uh, I, I think could could hurt them. You guys are some, but um, I I think you know there's enough talent. E even distribution. A lot of the top D2 teams can hang with D1. I mean, Plymouth North is a great example of that, a team that has, you know, Division One caliber talent every year. Um, you know, uh, earlier in the season, I had, I had pegged them as a Super 8 contender. Um, I think they really needed to, to have a win there in the Brad Martin tournament. I think uh, losing to Silver Lake twice in six days and then losing to New Bedford hurt them a little bit. They're going to have to they're going to have to be flawless down the stretch in the Atlantic Coast League. Uh, and then obviously Nauset, I, I, I think would split with them. I think they've stumbled a little bit. I think that could hurt them in the RPI. But uh, no question, if a team in Division Two uh, really runs the mill and they've got talent and and there's there's ta clear talent that everyone sees. I think they should be considered. That's why I think Maskinama will, will get in, has an edge right now as one of the final spots in, in, in the Super 8 tournament. But certainly, uh, I, I think th that if you run the mill, I think you should, you should be in the talks, no question. So. Which team could potentially make a surprise run into the Super 8 division in the next few weeks? Yeah, I, I, I think some teams that we were looking at early on, um, Silver Lake was a team that kind of played over its head a little bit. They came down to earth, I think, this week with a loss to Quincy. But um, certainly, they're young, but they're talented youngsters. And I think uh, in that league, the Patriot League, it's just kind of a seesaw. Everyone kind of beating up on each other. Uh, that's gonna, that, that could, if they go on a run there in the next couple of weeks, um, that could work to their advantage. I think uh, Braintree is a team that nobody's really talking about, even though they've been ranked high all year. I think they just they just have trouble getting on the field. To be honest with you. So like every every time we go to see them, it's rain out. But um, you know they're going to have to play flawless down the stretch. I think Lincoln Sudbury, coached by Kirk Frederick, one of the best coaches in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, not a, not top end talent like they have every year, but this is a well rounded team. Sid Warren Brand has has made himself an all state contender in his first half of the season. I think you look down the line, Bill Ricca. I think when Chris Murphy is on the hill, they can hang with anybody in the state. Uh, it's a matter of depth, I think, like everybody else. And, again, we see with the Patriot League, Merrimack Valley Conference, everyone is beating up on each other right now. Bill Ricca is going to have to win out in the second half of the season. I think you go down the line, you look at St. Peter Marion, which, as we mentioned, had a big win over St. John's, their rival, to start the season. Uh, Jack Riley, uh, a UConn commit. Uh, one of the best two-way players to start the season in the state. Uh, his father, Ed Riley, the coach, uh, always does a really nice job with them. I think they're the, if St. John's is the number one team in Central Mass, I think St. Pete is a, is a, is a pretty good 1A. Um, and then you go out west, I think Springfield Cathedral. Again, some top-end talent there. Andrew Noonan, the UMass commit at catcher. Uh, Peter Cornello, the third baseman, committed to Holy Cross for hockey. Uh, every pitcher plays in the field. Really solid lineup there. Uh, I think they're very well-rounded. I think going into the season, they were the top team out there in the West. They had a couple stumbles. But again, I think the next couple weeks could determine what they do. Big game on, on the 17th of May against St. Peter Marion. That could determine whether they're legit or not. Um, and, like, and also, CM and MC, again, I think those are two teams that are going to have to really play flawless down the stretch here uh, to to ensure a, a, a ticket here because there's so much to be determined. So. Now the race for ESPN Boston's annual Mr. Baseball Award is on and over the past few years it's been an interesting one yeah. and from what I understand you have a certain player in mind. Yeah I, one particular in mind right now I think no question Joe Friday uh, what he's been doing right now He's just been absolutely tearing it up uh, at the plate. Uh, I, I think that can't be understated enough. Slugging over 1,000 percentage is pretty impressive. Four home runs at this part of the season, almost 20 RBIs. Uh, this guy, he, he doesn't get tested much behind the plate. He's got a can in there. Um, he really has been the, the guy above everybody else. But a couple others I think to keep an eye on. Uh, Isan Diaz, the shortstop from Springfield Central. Um, it's not a, 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 you know, a, a, a top-heavy team like like – like Cathedral, Westside out there, but uh, he's an incredible talent playing out there in the middle infield. Projected to go in the first five rounds of the Major League Baseball draft. We haven't had a guy like that in three years, going back to Talabiti. You know, hitting 440, 600 on base percentage, slugging 760, uh, and his defense, it's just wow. I went and saw him last week 
made this incredible throw coming across on the run, barehanded, gets a guy out by a, by a, by one foot there on the first base path. Uh, he's had a lot of hype, and he's lived up to it every bit this year. Um, and like I mentioned, Jack Riley over at St. Peter Marion, uh, one of the better two-way players, hitting 429, six RBI. But at, at on the mound, 1-0, 33 strikeouts, 18 innings pitched, uh, 0.0 ERA. That's the big one I, uh, you look at. Um, another one out there, Neil O'Connor. You guys all remember him from football season, the All-State quarterback, mm-hmm. Gatorade Player of the Year, headed to UNH for football. Well, he's a pretty good pitcher on the mound, too. Uh, high 80s fastball. 3-1, 33 strikeouts, 0.13 ERA. He had a battle, epic battle with St. John's uh, a week and a half ago, losing one nothing. Uh, but uh, quite an impressive player. Uh, Seamus Curran over at Aguam, the first baseman. You look at him, and he passes the eye test. He's 6'4", 230 pounds, left-handed hitter, hits to the power gaps. He, he sprays the all fields. He can hit it deep. He's batting 517. 650 on base percentage, 931 slugging percentage. It's another impressive hitter there. Uh, one home run, six RBI, but he's been walked 11 times. Don't, anyone want to picture this guy? I mean, he's quite an impressive player. And then you also got to look at Keith Levitt in, in Saint, at St. Saint John's Prep, leading the Catholic Conference in hitting right now, 636 with three home runs, 12 RBI. You can hit If you can hit in a Catholic Conference, you can hit anywhere. And for that, he just deserves consideration alone. So we've had several nice storylines over the first half of the season, one of them pertaining to ESPN Boston's Coach of the Year Award. Yeah. Who's your pick right now? Yeah, I think the best story right now is West Springfield. 3-17 and 17 last year. Right now they're 9-1, and one, uh, and they've been playing the best baseball out there in Western Mass. Uh, <laughs> the best pitcher, honestly, might be a freshman. Nick, Nick Domkowski had 16 strikeouts against Springfield Central in a 10-0 win about a week and a half ago. Uh, a lot could, a lot could, you know, lots up in the air in the next couple of weeks, like I said. But right now, this, is, this has been the most impressive turnaround. I, I'd put them on the short list of Coach of the Year consideration. So. We still have a whole second half of the season. <laughs> and as always, we'll have all your updates here right on ESPN Boston High Schools. For Brendan Hall, I'm Kelly Emerson.